subscriber Bates and today I will be presenting um, a video about Helen Keller and her impact that she made on the deaf world. Alright, let's get started. Um, Helen Keller is well known for, again, her impact that she made in the deaf world. She is most known for her, her journey of life for being deaf and blind. Um, with the help of her family and her teacher, Ann Sullivan, Helen was able to achieve many of her goals and be a, a successful deaf-blind person in the hearing world. Uh, she was really not hindered by this deaf-blindness. She took advantage of all opportunities she's had and became a person of history because of all the things she did. Um, she was able to communicate with different tactics, which later on in the presentation, I will show you how she was able to communicate with others. And um, it, her communication opened up many doors for those later that are now deaf and blind to be able to communicate. All right, just to tell you guys a little bit of history about Helen Keller. Helen was born in 1880. Uh, she was born in the state of Alabama, in the city, a small city called Tuscumbia. She uh, was the daughter of Arthur H. Keller, and she was also the daughter to Kate Adams. She had three siblings. She had, um, I'm sorry, she had four siblings. She had three brothers and one sister. Uh, many of you guys may not know that Helen was actually born able to hear and see. It was not until she was about 18, month, 18 months old where she uh, got really sick. Um, I believe it was an illness that di the doctors diagnosed to be scarlet fever. And although she did not have this illness for a long time, it did leave her deaf and blind. So all, all of this, all of her life was impacted from that one illness, which is crazy. So, um, from then again, then on, she was unable to hear anything or see anything, and um, it classified her to be a deaf blind person. Now, being a deaf blind person really posed a challenge for Helen's family because no one knew how to communicate with her. She was blind, so it wasn't as if you could show her anything she couldn't see. She couldn't hear, so she couldn't hear voices. You couldn't tell her anything. So again, her family did not know how to communicate with her. Therefore, it kind of made Helen a little bit stubborn because she was able to get whatever she wanted. Nobody really knew how to tell her no, yes, Helen, no, anything. So Helen most times got what she wanted. So... Helen's father, uh, Captain Keller, was on the verge of giving Helen up. He was really about to give his own daughter up because, again, Helen was looked down on bringing the family down as well. And he just became so frustrated with Helen. And that the fact that nobody, all these doctors they went to, nobody could help Helen in her case. Even though Helen's father had difficulties with Helen and wanted to send her away to an asylum, um, Helen's mother, on the other hand, was not okay with that. She was not about to send her daughter away because of her disability of being uh, blind and deaf. So um, her mother, Kate, searched long and hard for different doctors and people that could probably help Helen's case. Kate, her mother, was able to get in touch with Alexander Graham Bell, who also made a big impact in the deaf world, as we learned about. And um, at that time, uh, um, Graham Bell contacted Helen's mother. He told the family about uh, Perkins Institute for the Blind, a school where deaf, another deaf and blind woman had received successful education from... And with the help of Perkins Institute for the Blind, they introduced the Keller family to a woman that would make life easier for Helen. Um, in 1887, Helen and the Kellers were uh, paired up with a young female that went by the name of Ann Sullivan. And Ann Sullivan was a former student at the school uh, Perkins Institute for the Blind. And she as well had problems with her vision, although it was not nearly as severe as Helen. Alright, in 1887, this is when the two actually met. 
um, Miss Ann Sullivan went to the Keller's household to meet the family and um, Helen. Now, this was Miss Ann Sullivan's first teaching instructor type job, so she was really excited and eager to work with Helen. She wanted to make sure that Helen would be able to communicate with others. Ms. Ann Sullivan introduced a new type of uh, communication for Helen, and this is called tactile signing. So, tactile signing is a form of sign language where communication is used by people who are both deaf and blind. So, what Miss Ann Sullivan did first for Helen was use tactile finger spelling. So, what she would do is instead of just going like this, she would take Helen's hand and sign the letters to Helen as so in her hand. So Helen would be able to feel the signs. And it took Helen a long time to understand what was going on, why is this lady touching my hand and doing these movements and everything, but Helen finally did understand that um, she was signing to her. And again, Helen was only seven years old at this time. So, um, with long, constant hours of tactile signing, Helen finally understood that she's signing letters. And every, every object or everything had a name. So, I believe her first word was water. Um, Miss Ann Sullivan had put some water on um, her hand and let the water run down her hand and she did water and that was it she understood from there on she was able to do water back into Miss Ann Sullivan's hands and Helen got it she understood so from there on, Helen wanted to know what everything else was. She was excited, picking up things like, what is this? What is this? What is a doll? What is that? What is this? So she finally understood that everything had. So it. Helen then went on with the help of um, Ann Sullivan, and she attended college. And Ann Sullivan, again, was right by her side when she went to further her education. Helen attended the Perkins Institute for the Blind, where Miss Ann Sullivan had also attended. And she entered the school in 1888. Helen also went to other schools. She went to um, Wright Hum Hummison School for the Deaf and Horace Mann School for the Deaf, the Cambridge School for Young Ladies, and Radcliffe College. In 1904, Helen Keller graduated from Radcliffe College. She made history by becoming the first deaf-blind person to earn a bachelor's, a bachelor's of Arts degree. After graduating from Radcliffe College, Helen continued her success. She went on to publish 12 books and many of articles. She was also awarded many honors, such as um, the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which is a very prestigious award. So again, Helen Keller, as you can see, lived a great life. She wrote down so many barriers for the deaf and blind those that were deaf and blind and just proved to everyone that she could do it. She went to, again, she went to college. She learned how to communicate with others. She wrote books. She lived a very successful life to be a deaf blind person. And with the help of her family and especially Ann Sullivan that was by her side for a long time, she was able to do so many things and make a big impact on the um, deaf and world. Unfortunately, Helen did pass at the age of, at the age of eighty seven. I'm going to leave you all with a quote by Helen Keller. It says, "I am only one, but still I am one. I cannot do everything, but still I can do something. And because I cannot do everything." I will not refuse to do something that I can do. And again, that was said by Helen Keller. So I thank you all for watching my uh, video.